Hi, and welcome to Mama Don's Moments. I'm Julie. And I'm Stephanie. And we are the better half of the watch. Here, we'll talk about real life, family, and commiserate a little on what it means to be a Coast Guard spouse. Thanks for joining us. What are we talking about today, Julie? We are going to talk about OPSEC and Ooh. all the people who overshare and screw it all up for the rest of us. We are talking directly to you if you have Facebook posted something that you shouldn't have. If tweeted. you have celebrated your active duty person prematurely and screwed it all up for the rest of us, we are talking directly to your soul. Yes. And that includes the in-laws. Oh, God. That is the in-laws. Yes. And how do you keep the in-laws from posting? You can't keep the in-laws from posting. I think you can keep your parents from posting. But, but my parents really just don't care. Well, no, your parents. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying, like, I think you can't, one cannot keep the in-laws from posting, even if you were to say something like, you are jeopardizing your son's I life. Die. <laughs> I could die, mom. Stop posting to Facebook. Yeah, the son or daughter, the the active duty member would have to post yeah or not post tell the parents Tell the parents right and i don't know if they just don't think about it or if it's just a battle they don't feel like fighting or what sure but so we see it in the form of we have a very different view right because mm -hmm. we see parents of recruits who are just coming in. And a lot of these guys, we call them the babies. We they call are the babies. The recruits are the babies because they are so young. They are like 19. Oh, they're so young. And so just. Adorable. Adorable. And naive and, and naive small. And sweet. And you just want to take them and care and take care of them. And tell them it's okay. The CCs are yelling at you Those to make you better. Those mean CCs, I know. Those mean CCs. But anyway, so we see a different side because we do talk to the parents sometimes yes and the parents are very concerned right because up until this point they've done everything exactly for this child they've never had to adult without their parents they're, yeah they're, there's these kids have never had to take care of themselves or do mm -hmm. anything and so the parents are very much like but but what what they can't do this and you know we try to reassure them yeah they really can they yeah. just went through an eight-week boot camp without your help yeah they're men and women and they now. made it so they are grown people who can function right so what is OPSEC OPSEC is op operational security right and mm. and it I think it looks different to different commands but in general it is protecting our loved ones by keeping the secret of what the operation is right and we can actually say that this is really across the board right yeah. for all military exactly this is not just a coasty thing this is not just a navy or a marine or army thing this is like across the board and it's something that is so important that i think new spouses and new family members really need to understand the importance of it because yes it's very hard to imagine that anybody is going to see your little facebook post and right. do something about it, right? Right, who's looking like, at what I post? Nobody, nobody evil is checking my Facebook page. Right, right? Nobody, who am I? Yeah, nobody with nefarious plans is checking my my little Facebook page. Right. To see that my son or daughter is on some cutter and is coming back at a certain time, right? Right. That would never or happen. Or you could think, well, my stuff is on lockdown. You can't see what I'm posting, so it doesn't matter. It's only my circle of friends and family, right? right. I need them to know every second where my child is or my spouse is right exactly and i need to and also the complaint and i need to complain about the fact that they are, are gone for so long gone for so long and in some like wondrous location sending us all these amazing pics right which by the way are their instagram highlights let's just say yeah. it yeah those are not real life for them. That is the Instagram reel. That is the Instagram reel. Mm -hmm. And so I need them to know like how hard my life is right now. Guess what? No, you don't. Right. You do not need anybody to know how hard your life is until your spouse or loved one gets back. Exactly. And they give you the okay. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, think about how many missions these these spouses who are excited and and i'll say it's mostly new spouses but sometimes you get old and in your pattern and you could be in for 12 years your spouse could be and you could be like oh thank god they come home today and you've just violated opsec yeah and it's also your security too like yes people you don't need to let people know that you are home alone yeah that your children are without one of their parents yep 
Yeah. And that even comes down to having a, a Coast Guard bumper sticker. Yeah. I remember when we were in Southern California and Mike was working on some major case where he was drug interdiction or something. Yeah. And he came home one day and said, take everything off of your car that says Coast, Coast Guard. Guard. John, yeah. John did the exact same thing when we went to Jacksonville. Yeah. He said that they had just busted this huge cartel guy that was super big. And he looked at every single one of the people that arrested him in the Coast Guard because it was in international waters. Yeah. And the guy said, I vow on my life that every single one of your families and every Coast Guard person that I see and tell my, my people about, they are all going to take out your family. Yeah. And he was like, okay, now we, we remove all instance and sign that we are a Coast Guard family. And there's some areas that that's a necessity too. There are some areas where the Coast Guard is not popular. Right. And you really don't want any kind of... You don't want, like, we no longer have the Coast Guard Florida license plate. Exactly. We have nothing on our vehicles that indicate that it is Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. um, the only time I've really ever wore Coast Guard clothing is here. <laughs> right. I never wear it. I've, this is the first time really that I've, I have a wardrobe that has more than one or two shirts. Yeah. That say Coast Guard yeah. on it. Because, you know, luckily we're in an area, Cape May is a Coast Guard community. It is. And so we... Very pro-Coast Guard Very pro-Coast Guard. They love the Coast Guard here, which I am grateful for. So I feel very comfortable, you know, putting that out there. Yeah. But there are certain areas that I would never do that. And uh, our last duty station, we had nothing. My kids never wore anything that said Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. um, it was all very, like, no. Right. So, which is kind of terrifying, but also something that you have to like learn and figure out. And now I don't think that that necessarily that level of stuff applies to other um, branches, branches mm -hmm. like, you know, Navy's huge, right? Exactly. The Marine Corps is, hu is big. It's huge. So, you know, to wear that kind of stuff, I feel like they can kind of get away with that a little bit more. Right. There's an ocean of them where there are drops of us. Right. But also, the same thing applies, though. Don't be telling where your loved one's at. Yes. Even, and, and I can imagine how hard it is when they're gone for six months or a year to not, like, obviously, you're going to have to be like my husband's disappeared like for a whole year where are they mm -hmm. like it's gonna at some point it becomes kind of obvious right but it's minimal I've noticed I want to touch on something you just said we are at a training center so we do see a lot of recruits here and you and I being guardian spouses we are privileged to meet a lot of these families of the graduating recruits every Thursday night and you're right these mamas of these recruits, they are pretty hardcore about being ever involved. Oh yeah. And it's, it's overwhelming. Some of these moms, I think just this last Thursday, I'm, I had a mom who was like, so when do I make the reservation for this? And how do I help them house hunt? And I'm like, mama, you don't, they, this is your son is a man now. And he, if he can be trusted to get on a ship and save lives, then he can figure out how to apartment hunt without you. Yeah. There will be people there who can help. Right. But it ain't you. Right. Yeah. You got to you gotta let go a little bit. Like, I know you're proud. I but mean, I'm sure it's all over her Facebook. Oh, exactly. And so we need to, to tell more families. <laughs> Maybe no. I know you're proud and your son or daughter or whoever is amazing. And they graduated and they're out there saving lives, doing the mission, having the watch, all right. of the things. And you can put all that. When they're at home. When they're at home. Yeah. But when they're not, keep it to yourself. Exactly. So let's talk about that. And it's not a competition. I also want to say real quick, it's not a competition. Sometimes I feel like there are spouses um, more, th more spouses than really families that tend to be like, well, mine's been gone for this long or mine's done this many deployments. Oh yeah. But it's not a competition. Right. Right. It's like my husband's done deployments and I'm just grateful they haven't been longer. 
Right. You know, when he went for his school, when he went to OCS, that was a long time. Mm hmm. It, you know, it could have been a lot worse. It, in my mind, anytime I start talking about deployments, I'm always in the mind frame of it could be worse. Right. And also, like, so the OPSEC really part really comes into play as to when they're in port, when they leave, and when they're coming home. Right? Those sure. are, like, the big, like... Or any dangerous job that they are called in to do. Yes. That we are waiting for. For news. Right, for news. Because you also don't want to be the person who's posting stuff and you don't know, or some family member's waiting for something and you post that you've heard and they mm -hmm. haven't. That could be stressful, right? Absolutely. But also, don't think that the bad guys are not looking at your post to see when those loved ones are pulling into port, especially if they are, because you've seen it in the news, coming in with thousands of do you know thousands of pounds of illegal drugs right millions of dollars taken sometimes they have people on board who are they are bringing in to yeah. prosecute super bad dudes and so none of that needs to be let out mm -hmm. into the world right that is past classified like the like there are parts to their ships to their units to even there are parts even at like some units that like I've never been in because it's the operations center and right. you're not allowed like you are not allowed to go into that exactly. you're not allowed to carry a phone in there you are not allowed to go in yeah unless you have a certain clearance exactly I mean even at headquarters Mike had to check his phone into a locker before he walked into his office yeah and it's all part of keeping everyone safe because they know that it can be tracked Mm -hmm. And they know that it's not, it doesn't take a genius hacker to figure out this stuff nowadays. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you could have somebody who's, you know, acting like they're your friend and really it's some hacker who's getting the information for somebody else who wants to, you know, or do a friend of a friend of a friend that you would never have any idea about because you just thought you and I are friends on Facebook and, they're and friends. you're not even thinking about three levels down of friends that right. you don't even know. And also keep in mind that not only are they watching, but if you're posting, oh, they're supposed to be pulling back into our home port of such and such. On and they Tuesday. Will be on Tuesday. And they'll be here by two. You've just given them an engraved invitation mm -hmm. to come and seize, seize all yep. of those things. Yep. And guess what happens when that, because guess who else is checking? Well, Big Coast Guard is. Big Coast Guard. And guess what will happen? They will reroute. Revert and reroute yeah. or change or keep them out. Yeah. And you're the guy who caused that by posting your violation of OPSEC post. And guess what? You don't want to be that person. Oh, my because gosh. Because they will imagine? know who it was. Can you imagine? And you if don't you want to be the spouse of the person that did it. Exactly. On this small boat with all these people. Right. Ooh. I yeah. don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy. I would never <laughs> want to be that guy. Like, even now, because my nephew, who is in, and he's mm -hmm. on a cutter, currently deployed, I didn't even bother to ask. Right. I'm like, I don't know where he's going. Good. I don't know when he left exactly. I don't know where he's going, and I don't know when he's coming back. He'll and let you, you know, know when what? he's home. He will let me know when he's home. Yep. And that's fine. I don't need to know. Yeah. It is none of my business. When we lived in California, uh, Mike had a bomb-sniffing dog, and he would get phone calls at all hours of the day and night. He had a go bag. The dog had a go bag. I mean, he had a canine vehicle that came home with him every day so that he would be able to respond to phone calls at all hours of the day and night. And every time that phone rang and he suited up and left, I was terrified. One o'clock in the morning, there's a bomb threat to a school or some crazy thing. Terrifying. It's terrifying. And you want to commiserate with people. You want right. to say, oh my gosh, my husband and my dog just went to the place that everyone is evacuating so that they can go through. They're the only ones in the building systematically checking. For this bomb. Exactly. So you want people to commiserate with you on that, but you can't. You can't. You can't say a single word about it no. until you know they are home and safe. Yeah, and I think the way I've all, I've handled that, but I, going back to my being growing up with law enforcement, mm -hmm. right? I have always trusted training. Exactly. So I've always trusted the training. That's always been my motto: trust the training. You know, I have people who are out 
of, you know, friends that are not in the Coast Guard Mm -hmm. who are like, I don't understand how you cannot be terrified every time John goes flying because I trust the training. Yes. I trust the flight mechanics who have worked on the helos to do their job properly. Mm -hmm. I trust his co-pilot that they've been trained properly and do their job properly. I trust the flight mechanic in the back who is like, let me tell you, flight mechanics, I love you guys because you keep the helos up and you keep them safe. Exactly. Without you guys, like it would be a lot harder to trust training. So, you know, the flight mechanic in the back, who's like, everything checks out, everything looks good or no, that's not good. We need to go back. Mm -hmm. So like, I trust the training of the people that he's flying with and that he works with. Exactly. Right. And so it's always been trust the training because, you know, before we got into the Coast Guard, he was in law enforcement and I, it's a lot different now than when he was in, but I still had to trust his training yes. and that he would come home. Um, I remember I got a phone call one day, he was running late and he had to go do something. And so he had them call me from work mm-hmm. that, and the first thing they did oh was, my gosh. he's okay. Yes. As soon as I answered the phone, they were like, he's fine. He's okay. He yes. just wanted me to call you. Oh my gosh. I just got goosebumps thinking yeah. about that. So yeah, because that's terrifying. Yeah. And so, like you said, no news is good news. Yep. If you're not hearing anything, then that's good. And you just have to trust the training. It's the hardest thing in the world to do, but you just have to find a way to trust it, put it out of your mind and do your, and just live your life. Exactly. And move on and quit posting about it on social media. Right. Yeah. We have to stop that collectively as a, as a group of spouses out there. And why is that not censored? (laughs) (laughs) We have to put out there. As often as possible in all of our circles, not to post violations of operational security. Anything that puts our loved ones in danger and our loved ones' loved ones in danger. Because everyone on their ship is their loved one. That's their brother. That's their sister. That's their person that they are protecting side by side, day and night, every single day that they are at that duty station. And we have to keep everybody safe. We want everybody to come home. Exactly. So it's, yes, it's such an important thing. And it just, so it really drives me crazy when we see, you know, family members who are like, well, I'm just going to post this. It's like, no, you're not. Yeah. And you know what? It, this made me think of so many frustrations happen in military families because secrets are kept. Yeah. And I think sometimes I've been guilty of that where I've been like, why don't you just tell me what's going on in your day? And Mike is like, I can't, I cannot tell you these things. And I think at first I get offended. Like, who am I going to tell? I'm not going to tell anybody, but even knowing certain things puts you at risk, puts me at risk Yeah, and puts him at risk. And it puts whoever I accidentally like joke about a situation. And I'm like, Oh my God, I shouldn't have said anything. Now I've put them at risk. Yeah. It, it creates strife at home sometimes when you ask your husband hey what did you do today or your wife or whoever is your active duty member and you say hey what was your day like what did you do today and they say Mm, yeah i can't really talk about it but you know it was a full day and you're like well i'm your partner i'm your best friend i'm your loved one but you aren't no (laughs) you don't have security clearance i don't have security i don't have secret security or top secret i wonder what it would take for us to get it do you think they would give it to us then and then be able to tell us (laughs) I don't think we'll ever qualify. I mean, in my mind, I qualify, but. Yeah, because, man, they dig deep on those. They do. On those things. And I also, like, in part of OPSEC is also your security clearance, right? Mm Because there's some jobs where if you don't have your security clearance, you can't work. Exactly. So also, and I think, and I really wish that we could really push this more to new spouses to understand how important your life is as far as keeping it clean for security clearance. Right. I don't think they understand how deep this mistake you make right now could ruin 15 years from now. Yes. Or the mistake you made five years ago. Oh, sure. Could potentially mess up right now. Exactly. And like, cause I mean, things like finances. Yep. If you're in a position where you're in a lot of debt, that makes you a security risk, mm-hmm. you know, or if you have done certain types of posts, on your social media, yes. and your social media is wide open. Your security risk. Yes. If you're like, I'm an influencer, so everybody and their brother can see my Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitter, my Snapchat, whatever all of it is, it, and you're open and you share everything, you are a security risk. Yes. Yep. 
hundred percent. Yeah, you may think you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you are, but the military does not. <laughs> right. <laughs> Big Coast Guard disagrees. Yes, they would strongly disagree. Be like, you need to lock that down. Lock it down. And even if you think. Well, I'm just sending a DM or a private message or a PM or a message just to my best friend to complain, right? Mm-hmm. That can still be hacked. Oh, absolutely. Your Facebook can be hacked. All of your social media can be hacked. Absolutely. Everything can be hacked. I mean, look at every time we look at a boomer who yeah. is like, hey, disregard. I just disregard sent to this Nigerian prince. <laughs> right. Disregard every post that was just made on my account because I was hacked. Exactly. And you're like, okay, boomer, of course you were. Yes. But that can happen anytime to anyone. Yeah. And they're getting smarter about it. But even if you think, okay, hacking will never happen to me. And you, you call your very best friend and you say, hey, I am sad. Mike is away for 60 days, but he's coming back on this day with this amount of stuff. He's doing this really cool mission. And then, you know, three days later, your friend is talking to a different friend and they're like, oh, my gosh, did you hear about that really cool mission that so-and-so's husband is doing? And then they tell two friends and they tell two friends and they tell two friends. And you were just talking to your best friend about something totally benign. Right. And now you have created a potential Security risk. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you don't think it can happen to you until it happens to you. Right. And now you're that guy. And then it doesn't affect just you. It affects your spouse because it can affect their career. Yes. So, and yeah, and you should assume everybody's always watching and listening. Yep. Including the other, like your military branch. Mm-hmm. Those guys are checking. Yeah. If you think that they do not have a way to tag certain words to show up and to check those posts. Yeah. There's a whole cybersecurity like field space force <laughs> laugh but that's part of their job yes is, is cyber security yeah they're not just sit around looking for aliens <laughs> <laughs> be cool if they did though i know that would be awesome <laughs> but they're also part, like taking care of cyber security and yeah. checking on these things very important it's, these the world they now had to create a whole branch to start dealing with this. Yeah. The world now is much different than it used to be. Yes. And I'm not to say, and that's not to say that they're the only ones doing that kind of stuff. But right. they're doing a lot of it. Exactly. So if somebody comes and knocks on your door, like dressed as men in black, mm-hmm. and you're like, ma'am, we're with Space Force. We need to have a conversation about your Facebook. Yeah. You Don't better. Be surprised. <laughs> you better realize that you violated something you shouldn't have. That's OPSEC, man. Very important. And I'm glad we're talking about it because you're right. It does. I would say it does mostly apply to new spouses coming in who are just super jazzed and, that, their parents. and their loved ones are doing something new and cool. And yeah, their job is super cool. A lot of the times on their Instagram reel that we see highlights of. Yeah. And you can share it as soon as they get back or yeah. as soon as they give you clearance. Exactly. When they're sending you the newspaper articles, that's when you can share That it. is when it's safe. Yeah. And then it's only safe to post what's printed. <laughs> exactly. Do not add, oh, you wouldn't believe what happened yes. on this one. I heard. No, you didn't hear anything. That's right. You're, we're all blind, deaf, and dumb when it comes to that. Yes. So I guess to wrap up, we kind of want to know. Right. Have you been that guy? Have you been do that you guy? Do you have a story where you have breached OPSEC? Do you know Please. someone? Or do you know someone? Do you have a good op- OPSEC breach story? Yeah, we want to hear it. We want to hear it. Please yeah. let us know. We promise we won't laugh. Well, we'll laugh, but it will be laughing with you and not at you. And we'll try and keep it as private as possible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, thanks for taking a moment with us, the Mom and Dance. You can find us on our website at momandancemoments.com. We also have social media, so you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest, all with Mama Dance Moments. <laughs>